Questions you do not answer at a car dealership. Welcome back, Homework Guy fans. Today we're talking about some of the sneakiest questions a car dealer will throw at you when you walk into that showroom. They are designed to throw you off, but trust me, answering these questions wrong or answering them at all can cost you thousands on your next car deal. I'll give you some possible responses as we go along, but honestly, it might just be best to keep your mouth shut. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and I'm here to make sure that you don't get ripped off when buying your next car. What seems like harmless information gathering questions sets the groundwork for taking serious advantage of you. So buckle up, and with the help of the amazing Elizabeth, let's dive into the seven questions you should never answer when buying a car. Liz? Well, let's start with the question that seems the least threatening, but it can still majorly throw you off. Question number one, what's your color preference? Hot button right there. Mm -hmm. If you want a specific color vehicle, let's say a white one, a salesman will push you hard towards the white one, even if it's the wrong trim level or priced well outside your budget. If you give the salesman what's known as a hot button early in the process, they are guaranteed to keep pushing it time and time again. Over and over again. Better than answering the color question, we recommend that you deflect by saying, Let's see what you have and we'll go from there. Now let's say a white car was exactly what you wanted and they happen to have a white vehicle. You say, I'm not super thrilled with white, but I could live with it. There's a reason you don't want to disclose your hot button issue. It has been a long held belief that if the dealer has a car you really want, you think you absolutely must have, they don't have to discount it to sell it to you. You start salivating and you'll pay almost any price to get exactly what you want. You'd have to agree, that's reasonably true. Question number two, are you ready to buy today? This question is pure pressure tactics, friends, and the worst dealers like to ask this. What they're really saying is, how desperate are you? Because if you say yes, they know they can rush you into a decision, get you to sign on the dotted line, and send you on your way before you've had a chance to do all your homework. If you've ever been asked this question, you say, I'm exploring my options, or I'm taking my time to make sure I get the right deal. You can also add, I'm looking for a dealer who wants to earn my business. That's a good one. Dealers hate answers like this because they know they've got to work for your business. They've got to convince you that they're giving you the best possible deal. Don't ever let anyone rush you into a decision. If they push, just say, I'm willing to walk away today if we can't make this work. Trust me, once they know you're ready to walk, you'll see how fast a better deal starts getting put together. Question number three, have you shopped around or gotten other quotes? By asking this, dealers are trying to understand how much you know about the current market. If you haven't done your research, they see an opportunity to keep their prices high. If you have, they might try to discredit other dealers or pressure you into making a hasty decision by questioning the legitimacy of those other quotes that you have. They also jump on a yes answer to this by saying, and now you're here, so obviously those other deals weren't so good. At a deal like this, when you're out to take a test drive, you can expect to get asked, Trial closing questions like, can you see yourself driving this car home today? Yep. It's a trial closing question that salesmen are trained to ask you. This involves getting you to visualize yourself owning the car you're driving and getting some emotional attachment started. Question number four, what's your monthly payment goal? Now, let me tell you, this is the mother of all evil car dealer questions, and it's designed to trick you right from the start. They're not asking because they care about your financial well-being. Not at all. That's right. It's about squeezing the biggest possible profit number out of you, friends. So what happens if you answer this question? You say, well, I can afford $500 a month, and boom, you've just given them all the power they need. Suddenly, they've got several ways to manipulate the deal to hit at or above that $500 monthly payment goal, and often that's exactly what they do is hit high on it. Extend the loan term, raise the interest rate, throw in hidden fees, whatever it takes. You might think you're getting a great deal, but that $500 a month payment goal could end up costing you $8,000 or more over the life of the loan. Here's a quick example of what Kevin said. Let's say you're looking at a $30,000 car. Over 60 months, you're looking at a higher monthly payment, but what if they extend that term to 84 months to hit your target payment goal? Boom, that's over seven years of payments with tons of additional interest. Suddenly, you've overpaid and that affordable car isn't so affordable anymore. No, it's definitely not. Yeah. Our advice, don't ever talk about monthly payments. Always talk about the total price of the car first. If you do indeed have a monthly payment goal, run that goal through a car payment calculator online with the loan term and the interest rate you're expecting and always boil that down to an OTD out the door price. 
whether you do this from the comfort of home, as you should, or you do it while you're at the dealership like some of you like to do, always work off a pre-calculated OTD price. If you get asked the question, what's your monthly payment goal? Answer by saying, I'm more interested in a total OTD price. Question number five, do you have a trade-in? This question comes earlier and earlier in car negotiations these days. Here's where the trade conversation often goes. Do you still owe money on your trade-in? And what's your current monthly payment? You revealing your monthly payment here tells them what they should shoot for or even exceed with your new car. It was the car shortage during the pandemic that pushed this extra interest into trades. But still today, the technique of asking about it early still lingers. Now you might be thinking, well, it's good to get it all out in the open right away, right? Wrong. Yeah, discussing the trade-in too soon is like giving them free money, friends. It's very easy to understand why dealers use the trade-in question. When you let them know about your trade-in right away, they're going to immediately bundle it into the overall deal, overwhelm you with the information, and suddenly you're juggling two numbers, the price of the new car and the value of your trade-in. And guess what? You get lost in the shuffle and kind of forget to keep your eye on the price of the car you're buying because they are busy lowballing you on your trade. It's a simple strategy. Their long-held experience shows that it's easy to hide the real numbers when you mix them together. You get information overload, you get tired and worn out, and then you say yes to a very stupid deal. Serious homework guy tip here. Negotiate one thing at a time. Lock in the price of the new car first, get it in writing on paper in front of you, and then ask them, by the way, what's your offer on my trade? Take the paper for the car you're buying off the table, put it in your pocket, and make them write their trade offer on a fresh sheet of paper. That really screws them up. Yeah. Now you've got control. The information is out in the open, and you can clearly see if you're getting a fair deal on both ends. If they start lowballing you, you can always take your trade in elsewhere to get a better value. Yes. And before you get this far in the process anyway, where you're asking them what they'll offer you for your trade, have a trade in offer from a place like CarMax or Carvana and know what someone else would give you. Have that in writing with you. Question number six, how are you planning to pay? This one's really sneaky. The dealer will ask, how do you plan to pay for this car? Cash, finance, or lease? And this question is loaded, my friends, because the second you tell them how you're paying, they start recalculating how they can make the most money on this deal. If you say cash right here, they might try to steer you away from it because they make a lot more money off a financed deal. If you say finance, they'll start working you over with interest rates and add-ons. And if you say lease, well, let's just say leasing is another can of worms we'll tackle on another day. Yeah. What should you say here? Simple. I'm keeping my options open. If we can agree on a price I'm willing to pay, I'll be interested in what your finance office has to offer at the time. Even if you're paying cash, if they had 0% financing, wouldn't you be interested? Sure you would. Right. Don't let them pressure you, push you around. Negotiate the car price first. Then once you're satisfied with that number, you can start discussing payment options, and that's when you'll have the upper hand. Question number seven, what kind of down payment are you thinking? Number six was all about how you plan to pay. This question is about how much down payment. How much are you planning to put down seems innocent, but it lets the finance office know how much additional junk they can pack into your car loan. No doubt. It sounds like a totally normal question, right? But think about it. They're digging for details to see how much they can get from you on the back end. And the back end I'm talking about is in the finance office. You know, Kevin, it's like, how much junk can they fit in your trunk? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Now, a down payment can be a great way to lower your monthly payment and reduce your interest. But this is a big but here. If you (laughs) tell them how much you have saved up, you're giving away leverage. They might push you toward putting more down than necessary or using that number to make the financing look more attractive, even if it doesn't actually save you money in the long run. So there you have it, Homework Guy fans, the seven questions you should never answer when buying a car. Remember, the more information they have, the more they can use it against you. Keeping it simple, negotiating one thing at a time, and always be ready to walk away if the deal isn't right. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more car buying tips to keep you ahead of the game. Leave a comment down below if you've run into these questions at a dealership and share with us how you handled it. I'll close with a hassle-free car buying update. As we have stated in previous shows, our hassle-free car buying service is the only car buying service that saves you the hassle of going in alone with a dealer finance officer. We never turn you loose on a finance man. Never. Also, when you hire us, either Kevin or I will personally take every call. You get to talk directly to us, and we are the only show hosts on YouTube that offer this kind of personalized service. That's right. 
What's really different about our car buying service compared to others is that we are the only truly customer-focused service provider you can find. Thanks to all of you out there in our audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty. And if you want our direct help in your car deal, text Liz today at 701-441-3399. That's right. And don't forget, you can sign up for text message or email support with me for a low cost. And for those of you wanting to get the most out of your current or future vehicle, that's super cool with us. You can learn what's a good, reliable, new or used car to buy in the first place, or you can get advice on the best maintenance practices for the vehicle you're driving right now. To do all of that, we have our in-house automotive expert on board with us. His name is Alex Stevens. He's exceptionally talented and will help you get the most out of your current or future car. To read up about Alex, just go to our website, thehomerguy.com. And click on the pull-down menu and find Ask the Auto Expert. Alex Stevens is available at a low introductory price, and he's beyond knowledgeable and talented. As I mentioned before, you'll see a lot of Alex as we explore good and bad cars in coming shows. If you buy the $75 phone call with Alex, I promise you'll be delighted to talk to him. Either me or Liz will connect you with Alex. To all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire hassle-free homework guy team. Thanks for listening.